Hey everyone, I'm CC and I'll be the host for this next run. But before we get to it, I have a couple questions for you. Have you ever wanted to be a gymnast and somersault constantly through your hometown? Have you ever wondered what would happen if your best friend hit you in the face with a two-handed great maul? Do you think all birds are jerks? Then do I have the run for you and it's up right now. That's right, I'm talking about E7 90% turbo with your runner, Brab Hall the Fifth! All right, uh, hello RPG Limit Break 2023. Uh, my name is Bram Hall V, and this is E7, that is uh, seven spelled S-E-V-E-N. Uh, this is the turbo category, so it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different from what you, uh, if you've played this game, what you uh, might have experienced. Um, yeah, um, I, I suppose I'll just get uh, right into it. I know we have, a, we have a cut scene to not skip the intro, so I have to make sure not to do that. And so I'll count down in uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck. All right, so here's the main character of the E-Series, the, uh, the boat. <laughs> this is one of the few times that it doesn't crash. You see boats a surprising Boy, amount in this game, and they don't crash. <laughs> All right, so uh, enjoy uh, Innocent Primeval Breaker here. Pretty, pretty nice artwork, but I'll, I'll, I'll stay quiet for the song. <laughs> yep. I've actually not seen this in a while. I love the mid 2000s Falcom where they just go full anime on their openings. Yeah. Whoa. Some of these animations are a little fancier than I remember them being. I remember thinking of this. I remember thinking this like this intro was like a PowerPoint, more or less. I mean, that's that typically is. It's just character portraits and stuff. They didn't have the budget for full-on animation until like Cold Steel Four. Yeah. We're never going to find out who that is, by the way. Or that. <laughs> so, in like in typical tradition of the E series within the speedrunning sphere. Um, this is the kind of game where, where large sections of the campaign just go missing. Yeah. Uh, so like, there's, uh, there's, we're, we're not gonna have context for a lot of these, this imagery that you see. This, dinos, this giant dinosaur actually used to be in the run. It was, it was an optional boss that we would uh, defeat to get levels early, but it's not needed anymore. Remember him? <laughs> Somebody shot at best boy. <laughs> uh, check out this. Uh, check out the soundtrack on Spotify. There's, there's a longer version of the song. I think it's better. <laughs> yeah, Falcom is like really cool with their music, just being on every platform. Yeah. But, like you can use our music for as long as you give credit. You can just play our music in a lot of things. It's like. You want to play it at a dance. You want to play it at a wedding. Just, just, just make sure that you give credit, and we're good. Okay, so Adol and his friend Dogi have arrived at the at the port city of Altigo. Um, this was a town that was recently at war, or it's a it's a nation that was recently at war, and uh, it's only it's only now kind of allowing visitors for the first time. Um, as far as the story goes, uh, I mean, like, I don't really trust my recollection of it too well, and also, like, a lot of it is just not there or out of order, so I, I probably won't talk about it too much, but basically he's going to just get thrown into an adventure right away. This is pretty far for the course. Yeah. Yeah, so in the chronological order of sequence of the entire series, which is typically a bit out of order, uh, this game takes place after the events of E6, um, which is kind of obvious if you played E6 because Gase is a character in this game and he was from that game. Uh, and it's actually technically after E8. So we're second to last in the current chronology, uh, right behind nine, which will be later on in the week. Okay, uh, skip the tutorial, please. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. I, I got a little worried when like I pressed the button and it didn't respond right away. Yeah. We were talking some pretty high praise about this soundtrack. I am excited that this is in because we get to show uh, two of my favorite Falcom JDK composers of all time, uh, Saki Momiyama and Masanori Osaki. Uh, those two, like, they composed for like the PSP era of Falcom, and some people I know don't like their production as much as some of the like 
prior ones, but I think their music has a ton of character and just it's, there's a lot of bombastic tracks that just sounds so cool. So this is the first and so far the only game in the series where you can play as Dogi. So I'm going to switch to him and have him get eaten alive by chipmunks real quick. There is a purpose for this. Wait, no, I thought, I, thought that was the last one. Okay. So um, right off the bat, uh, you know, without without the intro cutscene, this is like two minutes into the run. This is the, already the hardest trick in the entire game. No, save. Uh, I'm not going to really go into detail about how this works, but basically I have to do a whole bunch of inputs. Yeah, so for the record, uh, this is why the category is any percent turbo. Yeah. Uh, you need to generate an absurd amount of inputs per second, like at least like really? 17. This can be done by a human because our good friend Giotto, who has helped ruin slash eviscerate yeah, like again. every East game, uh, has actually been able to do all of this stuff in real time. It's just way harder and way worse on your fingers. And sometimes, like sometimes, he has to do like slightly less optimal versions of it, just because it's. Uh... No, come on, dude. All right, I'm just gonna focus. Okay, there we go. Nice. So he just skipped out of bounds to a loading trigger that he's not supposed to get to, and is what is something kind of common in the E series. When you do things out of order, later stuff just tends to not get in your way. So like several different barriers that would prevent him from making progress just aren't going to. So he's gonna be able to accelerate to a much significantly further uh, ahead part of the yeah, game. Yeah, I'm gonna go as far as I can go, which is like the fourth town. Um, I should mention like turbo in this game, like we already talked about why you need turbo to do a lot of these tricks, but it's not for text at all. Like when you see the cutscenes zooming by, that's an actual feature in the game. You just hold the cancel button to fast forward. Mm -hmm. And there's, there, there, there's, there's gonna be more, there's gonna be more stuff you get to see and it's going to be quite a treat. Yeah. So anyway, the reason I had to have a uh, dogie disappear is basically that, um, cause I was using that enemy to uh, launch me in the air. And if that enemy could target someone else, it would make it a lot harder. But he's going to get rezzed here because I guess dead party members always rez in cutscenes. Anyway, oh, I should mention I'm at level one right now. I'm expected to be at like level 20, so anything will one-shot me, and that has been the case um, for a good amount of the uh, of the past couple, the past minute or so. So I do have to be careful about my movement. All right, pretty shortly we're going to be coming up on our first um, question mark boss fight. Uh, a character named Gaius is going to show up and he's going to say he remembers me from E6 and wants to have a duel. So I'm going to try my hardest to uh, win this duel at level one. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> <laughs> so me spamming that skill was not really, it was not just for comedy. Actually, uh, in this game, your skills are tied to the weapon that you have equipped and you have to use it a certain amount of times. Uh, before you can use it with a different weapon on, so I'm just getting four free, uh, a bit of free skill experience before he decides to attack and one-shot me. So after oh. that cutscene, he has a third new party member. This is uh, Aisha, the princess of Altago. Yeah, I always forget to mention her because yeah. she just kind of uh, spawns in because you, you, your party reforms after uh, the other me members are taken out. Yeah, so this was the first game in the party system it, uh, of East, which is you have three playable characters you can freely swap between. I like to call it a like 3D realization of the sim of the uh, gameplay that like you know SNES era Mana games did, which is kind of funny because if you played Trials of Mana 2020 and you played East 8 before that, you're like, this game feels really similar to like the modern East. Um, anyways, they hadn't fully refined things yet, so unlike later games, Adol is like the most powerful character in this game by a significant margin. Uh, we will be still using several party members for a couple different things, but Adol is the main damage dealer for a few fights. Uh, the other one is Dogi, but it's not because of his offensive output, but because of like peculiarities with the frame data of his attacks. Yeah, it's a little bit because of his, because uh, like, one thing about one weird quirk about quirk about Dogi is that he can't do zero damage. He'll, he'll, he's, he's level one just like I am, but I am gonna still be able to kill things with him simply because he's, has a, he's got a minimum damage roll of one, which um, because, of a, because of a system in this game, this is the first one to have like a guard system where you can block attacks and then do stronger, uh, then do stronger attacks in, uh, in response. And uh, so that, that one damage will get bumped up to like 17 or 15 or something. 
But anyway, the, the numbers don't matter. You'll you'll see what <laughs> what makes Doki yeah. so good. This is, this is one of the most broken East games in terms of combat for exactly. sure. Exactly. By the way, this is like the third or fourth dungeon of the game. There's a whole thing about going to places of different elements. Uh, this one being like the wind element. Um. So while I'm, you know, uh, spinning around, I, I, we can read some donations real quick. Sure thing. We got ten dollars from K Fizzle Four. My brother is in the next next door beating E6 for about the dozenth time. It's one of our favorite games, but we never got the chance to play E7. So I've been really looking forward to this run, as well as East 10 later this year. My donation is going to sing in a thousand words from my brother's favorite game, Final Fantasy X-2. Shout out to the upcoming East 10. One dollar yep. from Chumog. Sheesh, did you really think I wouldn't be hanging around to watch <laughs> East 7, Mr. Bramhall, the FF5? Good luck, Brahma Pogger Crisis. <laughs> and five dollars from Shawnee7188. Box cat, box cat, box cat. <laughs> Donation goes to Ghost Kumo's choice. P.S. Notice me, senpai. Oh my god. Uh, I'm gonna put those five dollars towards Yamcha's heroic sacrifice. Sacrifice Yamcha. All right, so I'm gonna do a second attempt at a, at a trick I was trying to do earlier where I open the menu and the chest at the same time. I don't know why it wasn't working. I actually I do use a bind for this, but it's just, it, sometimes it's off. Yep, there, there it was. So you can move during the little jingle slash animation there. And it's also actually like a really nice place to do some menuing if he needs to open the menu for anything. Like it's just a convenient time to do so. Got Aisha killed by accident, that's fine. Just don't get hit again. Or I have to use very slow dogie to move around. Uh, so here, anyway, here's, there's, here's, a, here's a puzzle. You um, turn the oscillating fans towards the organ and then use the missing pipe of the missing piece of the pipe organ and then I guess that opens a platform or something. Getting some real Fulgana vibes from this. It's like one of my least favorite sections in that game. Yeah. Oh, dang. So there's a little trick I like to go for where I slide off that button and open the chest right there before the cutscene starts, but didn't get it that time. That's a revival item, it's gonna be pretty useful. Hopefully I don't ever use it, but you know, you, you'll, you'll see. I'm level one, It stuff happens. So I guess I'll, I'll talk about the uh, movement. It is a dodge roll, and that's pretty much it for, for the time being. Uh, I'll, I'll have an upgrade of my movement uh, in the next dungeon. Yeah, E7 started the tradition of comically exaggerated somersaults being your main form of movement yeah. in 3D East games. Uh, this one, like, the because the... Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm at, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, that doesn't set me that far back because I already picked this up. That's right. So I, I got to do the, uh, the puzzle again. Wait, am I going the right way? Yes, I am. I keep forgetting that when you're at one HP, you just you, you, you can't touch the hazards there. I'm, I'm used to just kind of taking the hits because it's very low damage. Um. Yeah. Anything else you want to read? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we do. We have $10 from Genesic Gunlian. Always love seeing the E series. Get some love. I'm only able to watch the first couple days of the marathon and glad I could watch this. Okay, this time just don't run into anything. Don't get anyone, don't get anyone killed. Ah! Don't get skill issued. Duh. Oh no, don't hit the wall. Oh no, oh no. Okay, I didn't. I probably could have just kept going and been fine. Like these, these enemies have pretty bad targeting most of the time. You have to kind of uh, try to get hit, but also the perspective is a little weird. So sometimes you can't really see where where stuff is coming from. Yeah, the geometry of corners and moving around in 3D East games is. Oh, nice. and let's just say when they were programming it, it was more of an art than a science. Yeah, so saving like a second there on the item get jingle which may sound familiar to people who have played a certain other series. Oh, that's right, you got the idea, okay. All right, now we get to go to the boss. And the boss is a nightmare. I think he's like level 28 or something. And um, it goes without saying that anything, he, if I get hit by anything, um, it's, it's curtains for me. 
but uh, thankfully there is a turn invincible button in this game, although it, it's not quite as strong as it is in the later games. Yeah, so to get into that, there's a, in the combat in the 3D East games, you have such, something called a flash guard. They hadn't yet gotten the flash move if you played some later ones where you can just like dodge an attack perfectly. If you perfect guard an attack, uh, you get a couple seconds of mini crits um, and you also don't take damage. Um, unlike later games where they have like a buffering period, this one just gives you some iframes and for better and worse, like this can be extremely exploitable in this game. Uh, Headphone warning, by the way. That uh, didn't work. I wish you would stop moving around. Ah, okay, that's a, that's just a failure then. Yeah, nice so, thing is this game has a generous retry button. Yeah. So you might be wondering if he's doing such little chip damage, how he's able to beat this boss. And as it turns out, uh, chaining the other flash guards and like parries can just annihilate things. Uh, nice, uh, nice yeet. <laughs> I just said that so I wouldn't get hit. Just, oops. Ah, uh, he flew in the air. Generally, that spells bad news. Ah, uh, this isn't gonna work, I don't think. So I, I really wanted like, him to be in a corner so he can push me, but he keeps moving around. All right, stop flying in the air. Stop running across the arena. Okay, this could work, but I might fall out of it. So basically the, the reason this works at all is because Dogie's like the first the first part of Dogie's attack combo comes out immediately, like on the first possible frame. And I can cancel that with another guard, and I can do it really, 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 really fast. And then you just keep doing damage. And then eventually, like, I think the second the second attack comes out at some point, and that stacks on top of that. And then, like, the, the, the HP bar just goes away. Yeah, that is something you can do with really good mashing, but it's, like, almost inhuman. I have no idea how Jado was able to, like, do that. Um, but let me just say it is murder on your hands and still significantly less effective. Yeah. There's a reason we've uh, separated the two categories. It used to be that there was a big route change between the two because a lot of this stuff we didn't even think was possible in uh, human hands. But uh, yeah, it's impressive for sure, but it is also like any percent no turbo has kind of become any percent turbo, just way less consistent and way more murder on your hands. It's it called any percent don't ever run this. <laughs> All right. so I, gotta, I gotta sell a bunch of stuff. And then I have to buy a weapon for Dogi. Yeah, this one. Yeah, there are some alternative categories like all bosses, which explore more of the game as well. Uh, yeah, shout outs to Sean OMM, who's going to be running that at RTA in Japan this year. Yeah. We got some good representation at RTA in Japan this year with uh, E7 and um, East 3 Genesis, which is also a comically broken game. As you're going to find out with these, this series, most of the games are pretty broken. They make for fun speed games. They do. I think I mostly picked this game up because it looked really funny. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, also of note is that when I did the big skip right at the beginning, um, one of the things I skipped was a dungeon that I will never go back to, but at the end of it, I get the ability to fast travel on the map. So, I just, so now I have, I have to backtrack and walk everywhere now. But it's just worth it to skip that. Yeah, this game is so busted that it's actually faster to just not get fast travel. Later games would kind of amend this. Um, and earlier games actually had some pretty consistent fast travel too. Um, I think by the time you get to eight, you just have it innately. Yeah. Should be nice. Uh, I have oh. to remember to pick up the chest on the next, or oh, this screen, the next screen. Yeah, because yeah. I was practicing and then I forgot the chest and then I got uh, punished for it way later. Uh, so one thing I'm working towards is I'm picking up materials. Uh, I picked up one of them in the last dungeon and the, the, these materials are going to help me to craft a weapon for a character way later named Mustafa. And that'll basically be the uh, skip the game button. So here there's an enemy aggroed on, which means that he wasn't able to open the chest. So he just quickly save and load, which kind of resets the room a little bit and gives him a chance to open the chest. Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm going to go fight the first boss. Um, I, you know, you, you'd think, why would you want to fight the first boss? Uh, well, you, with the first boss gives you the extra skill tutorial, and if you do not fight the boss, you will not unlock extra skills, and a lot of extra skills are limit breaks, basically, just big, big moves. And uh, 
fights come, become slower later because their extra skills are actually quite good in this game. The two. Yeah, I'm, I'm also one of the materials I have to farm. Not all of them are in chests. Three. Four. And so having just, you know, being in a state where I've just defeated that bird boss and having just defeated the first boss as well is going to put me in kind of multiple simultaneous story states. That's going to be a running theme in this game. And it produces some comical results. I think I'm at like seven now. All right, I'll swallow my pride and I'll open the menu and check how many monster hides I got. Eight, okay. So yeah, so right at the start when Adol visited the king in uh, Altigo, I told him to investigate this cave. And of course this turns into saving the world towards the end of the game, but. As it always does. Shout out to Aisha just chilling there. Yeah, so she's not supposed to be in this cutscene, so she's just kind of set to a position and just not move. Suddenly, giant turtle. All right, so I want, okay, good, 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 good. I want to get him down to really, really low health before he decides to use a move. That way, I'll skip whatever he is he wants to do and he'll just immediately go invincible and start the extra skill tutorial. So he's at one HP right now. And um, what that means is uh, my very strong move, I'll just kill him with the first hit and then I can open the map, put the text box on the screen and uh, skip the entire animation. So that's a nice little time save. Yeah, so the extra skill is basically like your finisher or limit break if we must. Shout out to Tia, the medicine girl. Yep. Very important character, I guess, maybe later. Sorry, what were you saying about extra skills? Yeah, so the extra skill is basically just like your finisher move or your limit break, if you insist. Um, most characters are just, they have a series of inputs that they, or a series of attacks that they freely do. Uh, this tends to break most of these games in some ways, but at this point it's kind of a broken record just talking about the many different things that break these games. Uh, it's a little bit more balanced in this one, but yeah, you still kind of really want it for several fights. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see uh, what he's talking about when he gets to nine in a few days. <laughs> nine is more of a symptom of, like, design problems than... Because <laughs> like, at nine, you just, you just you use the extra skill, then you just get it back right, right away. Mm. I don't understand what they were thinking. Mm. It's definitely, it definitely takes quite a bit more work to get it in this one. Um, which you can replenish the extra skill meter by doing skills, uh, fighting things, taking damage, or... Um, most importantly, getting flash guards. Yeah. Which, as you can see, he can do about 30 of those per second. So, yeah, it really helps. Uh, I have to, this, this is a cutscene that's pretty much irrelevant to what I'm trying to do, but I have to clear Ertl's off lock later. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm supposed to say no. Uh, well, just time loss later. Because, like, if I had said no to the king there, then uh, once I leave the screen, the cutscene that you'll see will not happen. This one right here. And then there's a couple other cutscene triggers that get disabled. So anyway, that was a mistake I made, but it's not, you know, a run killer. All right, so now I'm going to go to uh, a mysterious abandoned island, which is where the water shrine is. Alas, we must meet Adol's great nemesis before going there. A boat. <laughs> <laughs> Had me going for a second there. I thought we talked about the guy that's about to join the party. Uh, I have time for like a quick one, uh, CC. Uh, yeah, sure. We have $10 from Zero Blade Edge. Good luck on the run, Bram. Put this towards Japanese voices for Final Fantasy 13, please. Okay, so Gaius joins the party here. This is like everybody's dream, I think, after uh, it was revealed that he was in the game. Yeah. East does not have a lot of recurring characters. Like, they'll appear in one game and there'll be like a little cameo in the next one, but because they introduced the party system, they had a little bit more flexibility to let you actually play as characters other than at all. So, there's a bit of fan service. Uh, they let you play as Gase, um, who is the other slash type attacker in this game. And then, um, as well as Dogi, which to this day, he's the, it's the only game that he's been playable. He was, he's a support ally Wait, in, eight and nine, but that's about it. Hopefully for 10, we'll see him again on the main stage. Yeah, 10 is, I believe, 
Oh, that's just, right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's only two characters. And I yeah, think it's just him and that other woman who I can't remember her name. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's set after it's either two or th or four. I don't remember exactly where. I think it's between two and four, which four comes before three. Um, I apologize to any four-year-olds learning math for the first time. <laughs> so that's an example of uh, me doing a menu to put Dogie back in the party while that um, uh, jingle box was happening. Also, there was a cutscene after, uh, after that chest, but because I did the skip, I don't watch it. So here's a... Because, you know, I, I, I did a big skip earlier to, you know, uh, remove a little bit of the dungeon. And so now this cutscene plays when I go inside and it just puts me in a different entrance for some reason. I mean, I know why. It's because it, they expect me to be in at that at those coordinates after that cutscene. But that, 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 that used to throw me off when I was first learning the game. Because you enter in this room, but you end up at that uh, part over there. I remember those things. Back in high school, we called them a swirly. <laughs> right, gonna return to the wind cape for, for a real quick moment here. Oh, we're gonna be, we're about to be picking up a weapon and then. Um, oh yeah, I just really forgot to do this. Yes. I didn't do this during the boss. Okay, one strength blast. There you go. Yeah. So in as you can tell, uh, as you can see, in any East game in this system. Uh, the skills that you bind to your four face buttons, you press a button and then press the button. You press like R2 and then press one of those buttons to use a skill. The more you use the skill, the better they get. Uh, this has been true of all the games, although this is one of the games where it really matters to the route. Okay, so I picked up a weapon called the Astoke, and uh, that changes Adel's um, uh, weapon type to. This is that's basically the weakness system in this game. Weapon types. It changes it to Pierce. And when, I charge, and when you charge up uh, an attack with one of Adol's pierce weapons, he just kind of thrusts forward. So that makes him move faster. Yeah. Like I said, Adol is the most busted character in this game. Everyone has a yeah, predestined... Yeah, everything. Yeah, everyone has a predestined weapon type. Adol's default is usually slash, but because you have weapons that can change your weapon type, uh, that only... I believe only Adol has... Um, he just kind of ends up being the most powerful character in the game. Yeah, and then his Adol's ultimate weapon, which I will never uh, find, uh, is all three types. Yeah, so it's just everything is weak to it that has any sort of weakness. Nice job on that, by the way. Yeah, that gives me trouble sometimes. Yeah, that out of bounds, he was giving him quite a bit of trouble in practice. Um, now these enemies are giving me trouble now. Yeah. Later games by, I, I don't know if it was eight, if 8 had it, but I know 9 had it, where you could just... You have an accessory that lets you switch weapon types anyway. Eight, I think it was New Game Plus, but yeah. yeah. Nine, you just kind of find them anywhere. All right, this is going to be a bit of a tricky fight. Yeah. So there's like only two moves that I can really use from here, and he gets four attacks before he changes uh, his um, weak point. Oh, whoops. That was my goof. All right, do it again, do it again. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. okay. All right, good. Octopus out of the way. That First never, try. That never, uh, <laughs> that never ceases to amuse me, just how their HP bar gets deleted. Yeah. Eight has something kind of similar with the damage glitch, but... Oh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> I, definitely think, I, I definitely think it's kind of funny. You're just, like, infinitely just, like, you know, dra Dragon Ball Z, like, blocking every attack and then just, like, hitting it, at, hitting it back. Like, yeah, the thing is that the, <laughs> about eight is that the damage glitch just destroys everything, while on this one... Uh, sometimes you don't get to do what you did, what I just did with Dogi because either because you can't use Dogi or because the arena is bad for because you have to be like pushing into a corner for it to work. So, case in point, I'm going to be coming up on a boss fight pretty soon where I am it's solo with Adol. Yeah. Uh, do you know if they implemented the whole like depending on your party setup that like you get bonuses? Cause, like... Uh, yeah, but I don't unlock most of them. Oh, what, so I'm referring. What I'm referring to is, um, if you have two Pierce characters or two Slash characters, you get a, a damage bonus. They introduced that in Cell Set. I th that's in Cell Set. I don't know if that was in Seven. I don't. I don't think it was. It's not relevant to the run. In the, mm. Okay. It's more relevant to like. Uh, well, I mean, like before damage glitch happened, it was more relevant to Eight, for sure. Mm -hmm. Eight uh, is unique because the damage glitch was actually introduced in a patch. Yeah. So. 
We're referring to something that lets you just eviscerate stuff by spamming skills in, in eight. It is kind of an unfortunate thing that it's there. Uh, it like trivializes like combat. I mean, it makes the game faster, but if yeah. you're if, if you're someone who likes a lot of combat in your speed runs, it ends up being a little bit uh, unfortunate. Either way, you say it's a great game. I recommend it. Giant lizard, and this game's great too. Okay. So here's the extra skill. It's quite nice. It's absurd. It can go through multiple hitboxes as well. So you see, I was hitting him like three times at the same time for every one of those hits. Yep. So you also see this boss has a stun gauge above its health. And it uh, doesn't really matter too much for this, but you can see an enemy like get staggered once that blue bar fills up and becomes yellow. So anyway, the the you know the Altigo Royal Fleet has come to bring us home. Surely they're uh, doing a very nice thing for us. No, they're actually going to throw us in jail for killing the king, which we didn't do. Or if we did do it, it's because I skipped over that part. But no, we were we were framed. And uh, the, the um, ironclad proof that we were the king's murderer was uh, the fact that we were the last people he spoke to before he died. So, of course, sentenced to, uh, sentenced to death without trial on those grounds. And, of course, 50 lashings. Yes. And uh, the method of execution will be death by boss fight. They're going to give us a really crummy weapon and a crummy shield. And they're going to put us against, they're gonna put us against a, boss that had, a boss that has, like, a third of the health that the last boss did. And they're going to be like, and they're going to think that it's impossible, but it's actually pretty trivial. So the strat to get the most mileage out of my, uh, out of um, this boss is I'm going to be spamming guard whenever I can, and that'll fill up my extra gauge. And I want my extra gauge to be filled before he gets stunned, which is kind of hard to do unless you're really mashing guard like this. So I want to like ideally get him to push me into a corner when possible so I don't get pushed away like that. That spinning saw move is really opportune as well. And I really want to line this up so I get all three of his hitboxes. And he's stunned. Big damage. And then just kind of go to town on him right here while he's, while he's laid down. And he's going to get mad. But he's mostly going to be doing the same stuff he's doing before. And... It's over. Nice. So who likes Dogi here? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so we get... There is no wall that he cannot crush. Even if it's not a wall, it's a bridge, but he, he'll crush it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's bad. <laughs> All right, so Gaius has something to show us. I don't remember what it is. Um, but I have to go. I have to go to the uh, village over here, an invisible village that's uh, only accessible if you. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember anything about the story. Disregard me. It's a shame that boss theme is like so short. <laughs> what the, the Metallica one? Yeah, one of the better ones in the game. Yeah, I love the E7 soundtrack. Like I said, this is the era they had Momiyama, Osaki, as well as you know staples like Jindo. Uh, uh, Yukihiro Jindo, Hayato Sonada, and Takahiro Unisuga. It was like one of my dream teams of, of Falcon JDK. They've had like an absurd amount of talent over the years, including like the iconic uh, Yuzo Koshiro from East 1 and 2. Yeah, the guy who uh, ripped off the Metroid jingle. Yep. All right, so yeah, so there's no, there's no village here, but uh, then some magic happens and we get taken to like Moonside or something. So basically, this guy right here is going to is going to send us on another quest, where we uh, have to confront the five dragons of Altigo and stop the apocalypse. So we're going we're going to maybe do some of that, probably. All right. So here we have several characters you're supposed to get at other points in the game, uh, including Mustafa, who uh, is going to be very busted. Yeah, Mustafa's the important one. Elk, um, I have in the party for story trigger purposes. He also rolls a little bit faster than anyone else, so I'm switching to him for the screens where I can't attack and use Adol's uh, stabby thing. Shout out to this uh, this um this this prompt right here. It's apparently really broken in non-turbo categories. You can use it to do like text storage, I think. Uh, I'm gonna be picking up a chest right here, which has a um, 
an item that will refill my SP fully. And that's, there's no, I only get one of them, so it's only gonna be important for one point, but if you wonder why I opened the menu to use an item that refills my SP later, that's why, that's what Jessup was in. This is probably my favorite song in the game, To Reveal the Way to Go. It's a hard question though. Um, right now, I'm going to go to an area of the game that I was supposed to visit earlier. It's also an area of the game that has plot triggers for this part. So, back to what I said about simultaneous story triggers, I'm going to be visiting this, uh, this town in both the past and the future at the same time. It's going to get a little confusing. Also, uh, on the way to uh, that village, there will be more enemies that can drop that item that I was trying to farm earlier. Uh, if you have anything else you want to read, this is a good time. Sure thing. We have $5 from Airplane. Add all rules. Gaius drools. $5 really? from Kiwi. Hey, Brom and GK. Good luck on the run. Hopefully the bird RNG is good. I thought it was pretty good. I've seen worse birds. I've seen much worse. $10 from Frozer. Hey, it's nice to see one of the first East games I've speed ran being played to perfection somewhat and how absolutely broken those games are in general. Mm -hmm. Good luck on the run, Bram. Shout out to Frozer, fellow, fellow East 9 and 7 runner. And then we have $7.77 from Tempest Mask 1000. Hi, Tempest. Hello, RPG Limit Break friends from the social media metaphorical desk. I'm happy to see my good pal Bram Hall the Fifth running E7, a rad game I hope to try for myself sometime soon. I might as well drop this jackpot as we're lucky to see an equally rad run. For now, let's keep raising money for Nami. And hey, who's up for naming the builder in DQB Spiel? Best of luck, Bram, East Coast gamers. Let's go. Here's one of the first bosses in the game. There he goes. There was one of the first bosses in the game. Oh, so shout out to that little pig, by the way. He's not supposed to be there either. Also shout out to Mustafa, who's not supposed to be here. At least he looks like he's in a normal position yeah. here. He, he blends in. Other characters will just kind of stand there. I, my favorite is still in Celsetta, if you bring Frida back to the uh, to the Highland cutscene. She's just standing on the side while like the bad guys are coming in and taking over. <laughs> it's like, do something. All right, so when I first enter the village, it's going to be in the um, it's going to be in the old uh, story state. But if I just save and load, it'll upgrade. And now uh, the village elder is standing here. So basically, the the entire reason I'm here, just spoil it. I'm not going to fight any of the dragons. I'm not going to fight any of the bosses. I'm here to pick up a chest. And then when I pick up that chest, I will have enough materials to make the log hammer from Mustafa. And uh, Mustafa's log hammer has a, a skill attached to it called Empower, and it's pretty neat. You um. You, you whack your allies with a hammer and, uh, you know, that gives them a nice little strength buff. But what also happens is that you can guard it. And I'm sure you can imagine where that's going. I but, love this track. This is like one of my favorite dungeon themes in this game. So shout out to that cutscene. Also move one step. Here's another one. This one's from the future. Oh yeah, Aisha leaves the party and gets uh, galoofed by um, uh, Sigrun. And then she'll show up a lot later and be very underleveled. So I have to go through this whole dungeon just to get one item. Um, I have to go through this whole dungeon. I have to go through this whole dungeon so I can get one item that will let me go get into a different dungeon that will let me get a different item. Oh, that's the wrong item. So I'm, I'm in here to get the spike boots, which will let me, or whatever it's called, the diamond boots, I think. And that'll let me walk across spikes. And that'll let me get into the uh, Earth Sanctum, which is from later on in the game, which will let me get the 20 Earth Stones. And that'll let me get the hammer. So there's, there's a lot of, um, a little bit of a detour just, just to get the, uh, the one skip the game button. And, and uh, actually, Jado's non-turbo route, which struggles a little bit with getting the right, uh, with, with, with uh, the trick involving the hammer, just, just ignores this part completely. But in exchange, there's kind of a really tedious other trick he has to do. If there's anything else you want to read, um, I'm just kind of running around. 
Yeah, I just want to mention the language voice bid war for Final Fantasy 13 is heating up. Japanese has really? caught up. It is less than $40 behind English. And then we are also choosing which character to heroically sacrifice in Dragon Ball Z. Currently in the lead is, of course, Yamcha by only $5. I would also accept Krillin. So I'm getting my revenge on the game right now. Instead of being at level one in a level 20 dungeon, I'm now like level 30 in a level 10 dungeon. So I don't have to worry about things hitting me as much. But the, the tables will flip again pretty soon. Bonk, 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 bonk. Yeah, like I said, geometry around corners in these games is never... Especially once you get that... Uh, that it, It's harder to control once you get that... Um, uh, Pierce weapon. Oh yeah, I gotta put these on, don't I? Yeah, so the diamond boot's just letting him walk over spikes. Yeah, if there was a way to skip the spikes, that'd be great, but I don't think there is. You, it, they kind of just stop you in your tracks when you hit them. Yeah, it's not something you can just damage boost over. But, you know, I've been surprised many times with this game. <laughs> uh, eventually, we're just gonna have credits warp in every East game. <laughs> we already have it in a few. <laughs> I'll say this much. You, uh, the, there is one, uh, there's one room that's stopping us from just going right to the final dungeon right from the start of the game. And that it's, uh, it's the second room in the final dungeon. There's no way to get past it without either the hammer or um, uh, the item, the plot item that you get to open the door normally. I hope you like that spider. He's, I I'm only defeating the spider because he's standing in my way. I just need to get to the next room. If you can skip this boss, that'd be great, but it uh, it triggers on room entry, so I don't think you can. So what happens in the second half of the game, once you, uh, you have to go back to all these shrines that you visited earlier, and then it'll open another door to a, uh, another dungeon. And that's where all the dragons live. So... This, this is one of my favorite tracks in the game as well. I, forget, I keep forgetting what it's called. Uh, uh, this one, yeah. I don't know why you can't fast forward these. There's a particularly bad one that's coming up. So yeah, now I have to open this flower, and then the big, large flower in the middle will also open up. And it's a, it's, it's a feature-length film, more or less. The boss that's at the end of this dungeon is actually pretty cool. There's like three different parts of it. And they're all, there's like uh, HP gates for each phase. And the strat for the all bosses run is pretty funny because you just destroy him immediately because you skip to the final dungeon and grind a bunch of levels before you fight him. But in, in, in general, I kind of really don't like this part of the game and I'm glad that we skipped most of it. Just because it's a lot of backtracking and busy work. <sighs> Dang. I like to try to get onto this vine before that guy chases after me and gets too close. That way I don't have to save and load to get onto it. No such luck today. Earthstone times 20. There we go, now I can get out of here. Yeah, so the kind of uh, anachronous nature of this game uh, really kind of started to happen within the last few years with the PC version. This game used to be a PSP game, which meant that capturing it and running it was quite difficult because you had to have a PSTV, which has since skyrocketed in value and become a much more co uh, coveted piece of hardware. Uh, with the PC release, um, definitely things improved, but it also opened the floodgates once we found out that uh, Turbo can break things. Um, there's always been like a busted nature to certain things inherently with this game that you could kind of mash your way through, but with the um, 
the inclusion of being able to double bind certain things to certain buttons, and then also turbo. Uh, we've just kind of cut this game in half. It used to be like almost three hours on PSP, and then like the formerly mostly glitchless uh, no turbo run on PC was about two hours, 20 minutes. Uh, it is now like 57 or 58, like for world record for any percent. For a turbo, it's 55, I think. Jeez. Uh, is that Chica or? It's Chica, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Chica. Shout out to Chica. He just he found a lot of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these games have been very collaborative efforts, um, especially between like the English and Japanese communities. We've been good idea materials. We've been sharing strategies for many years, coming up with new things. And although you know sometimes the language barrier becomes you know can be an issue, um, the nice thing is that like via services like Discord and via YouTube, we've been able to share strategies with video and uh, help each other out to really push these games as far as they go. Okay, so I'm going to do what I uh, talked about where I um, equip Mustafa with Empower, disable every skill except for a skill called Provoke, which I'll talk about when it's relevant, and take off some people's armor so that stuff goes where it's supposed to when I optimize later. All right, so coming up on the next screen, we'll see exactly what I was, what, I, what I've been working towards. I'm gonna be going all the way back to that screen with the village on it. I'm gonna go for a little nine second time save coming up ahead and that'll be the first time you see the provoke trick. You can save anywhere in these games, by the way. I don't know if we mentioned that. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were saving in like, there we go. Yep. <laughs> nice. All right, so to explain in power, um, you hit your own characters with a uh, buff skill. As it turns out, that can be flash guarded. And since the skill knocks you slightly in the air, when you flash guard a skill that knocks you upward, because you don't have a jump button, you only have like, a roll to get you a little bit off the ground. Uh, but when you repeatedly flash guard, uh, that kind of thing, like it stacks the vertical momentum. We've been exploiting that quite a bit in certain parts of the game. That's how we got out of bounds sooner, but uh, now we have a, a skill now we have, we have for us. that now we can do it on on command. Yeah, we have our jump. We have our jump button now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going back to that one screen. It's a really lovely little screen. It would be awfully peculiar if there was something like the loading zone to the final dungeon on it or something like that. We speedrunners are very good at foreshadowing. And also very sarcastic people. <laughs> Hello. So there's the loading zone of the final dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is what I was talking about when I said now I'm in dangerous territory once again. I'm level 34 in a place where I'm expected to be in the 50s or so. And upcoming is gonna be the screen that I was talking about a little bit a little while ago. You cannot get past this screen if you come here right at the start, which you theoretically could do. Ah, uh, save. Yeah. So yeah, just jumped over a wall there that would have been in my way otherwise. I also do have the item to open that door, but it's just, just a cutscene, so I don't want to do that. Yeah. Cutscenes are bad. It is worth noting that at this point in the game and the story, Mustafa is supposed to be replaced by his sister. So yeah. uh, you'll see a bit of an oddity when we get to the final fight where... Mustafa turns into a 10-year-old girl? Yeah. <laughs> Who is level one and can't do anything. So here's a little, here's an annoying puzzle. We have to turn some prisms around, but it's optional. Yeah, this one, was, this one is quite annoying in a casual playthrough. Which is kind of funny to say because Falcom games tend to not actually like be very puzzle oriented, minus like the bonus dungeon in East 8, which is a genuinely really cool dungeon. I actually don't need to get any of this, but um, I'm gonna get it anyway because I don't have good weapons. These are like these chests have just end game weapons in them, and I um, probably would do zero damage otherwise. Yeah, so a big part of why he's saving and loading here is AI um, is. AI controlled allies just love to move around the room and like aggro onto nearby things. So by saving and loading, he kind of normalizes his character's position just long enough that he can uh, that he can perform that skip, and the character will be in the spot that he needs them to be. Yeah, like I like if if I if if I can if I'm really fast on the on the on the empower launch, I'll do it before the character. I'll, I'll like do it as the screen's loading, and then the character won't think to move.
He tried to move right there, but he couldn't go anywhere. So I got him. I, I caught him. Ah, shoot. So you see what we mean here. <laughs> yeah. I try. I thought I could get away with not doing it there. There we go. Onwards. Onwards and upwards. <laughs> Literally. Uh, I wasn't high enough. Oh, yes, it was. Okay, good. Let's bring it. All right. This is a tricky one. Just the hazardous nice. thing that I'm supposed to equip. A, I'm supposed to equip an item to prevent the damage. He was having some trouble getting that in, in practice, so first try was really nice. Yeah. Okay, so now I, uh, I'm coming in on the, the final boss, and uh, I can't beat the final boss at this level, so I'm just going to grab these enemies real quick. And just kind of just grind here for four minutes. Uh, no elk doogie. And then, yeah. So, uh, the reason I uh, disabled every skill on Mustafa except for Provoke, Provoke just lowers their defense to like zero, so I can actually do damage, like real damage to them. And when basically the way the AI works in this game is that when you use a skill, they, uh, your AI will also use a skill. And um, if you disable certain skills, they won't use those skills. So, so I'm kind of manipulating the AI to only do the debuff. So yeah, this is going to be a fairly extended grind portion. A great, uh, it's a it's a donation reader's dream come true, really. It's fantastic that you're actually hitting enemies instead of your own teammates now. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a hundred dollars from Vela V. Love me some Final Fantasy 13. Here's one hundred dollars to the quote, throw hopes mom off a bridge fund, and seventy dollars from Stoltenheim. I resent that guy's slander. And just a reminder that starting with the E7 Any% percent Turbo Run, any $5 donation gets you in the running to win, listen to this, a Final Fantasy 13 Steam Key, a Final Fantasy 13 2 Steam Key, Lightning and Fang Perlers, Lightning Returns Steam Key, and an E7 Steam Key. And just a reminder that all of these donations are going to NAMI. The NAMI Helpline is a free US-based nationwide peer support service providing information, resource referrals, and support to people living with a mental health condition, their family members and caregivers, mental health providers, and the public. The NAMI Helpline is available Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time via call, text, and live web chat. To reach the NAMI Helpline, you can call 1-800-950-6264 or visit nami.org slash help to access all NAMI Helpline resources and contact information. Something that's kind of, we haven't really touched on that you see him doing a lot is it's actually faster to save and load because save and load is like instant to reload a room full of enemies than, you know, hit a loading zone and then come back. Yeah. Another thing, um, and this will be touched on a little bit more when we get to East 9 and also a little bit up when we get to Trails SC as well is that uh, when the lower level you are, the less exper or the more experience you get. So that's why I was skyrocketing up levels early on in this grind and now it's kind of slowed down. Yeah. Amusingly, Falcom isn't the biggest fan of like letting people just, they don't want to let people grind to be super over leveled. And, but they also don't want people to be like super under leveled by just like bull rushing the game. So they have a scaled system where the lower level you are, the more EXP you get. It's not a flat number in most instances. This was mostly fixed around East 8, but yeah, in, 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 in a lot of these games, under level characters are wet noodles. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably good to go fight the vinyl boss now, but it would just be, I'll take so much longer unless I get level 58. So that's, that's I have a pretty specific target uh, set. So well, I guess the strat right here is like stand around, wait for these guys to aggro onto me, and then get them in one spot and use that uh, sword dance move, which I'm not doing very good at getting all three of them at the same time. And that's the uh, that's uh, that's the skill that came with the weapon I picked up in this dungeon. Okay, last one. Okay, 
Uh, yeah, all right. So in this next room, there's supposed to be a boss fight against the, the, the true assassin of the king. But the boss never spawns because of story trigger reasons. And so I guess we'll never find out who killed the king. So sorry, guys. I mean, it was obviously at all. They said oh, yeah. so. That's true. So I guess get over this. This door won't open unless you fight that boss. So I gotta hit myself over it. Yeah, they had a tendency to set set a uh, fairly low ceiling to a lot of things in these games because they don't expect you to get a ton of height. There's always a way to get a ton of height yes. in these games. Um, They'll never learn. Honest to goodness, like. East games tend to be really well programmed in a lot of ways. They don't ne always necessarily have the best design choices, but like in terms of programming, they're pretty well programmed. Most of the things that we do, we end up finding through a lot of trial and error. This is Tia, the medicine lady from the start of the game. She's the final boss, actually. Mm -hmm. So shout outs to her. Yep. I, who knows how this happened? Even if you play it the whole game, you won't know how this happened, pretty much. So basically the, what I want to do is I want to get rid of one of the ads as quickly as possible because they'll push and pull me around. This fight is very movement oriented and, and I don't like it. Oh, one thing uh, about this game is that, um, or this run is that uh, you can kind of just Open the menu and chug potions in battle whenever you want. So I bought a whole bunch of them earlier. Yeah. It is worth noting this was the only East game in the 3D system that actually imposed a limit. You only have uh, the option of a uh, max of five of every different healing item. It's nine on easy mode. Nine on easy mode. Which is okay. funny because nine is actually the limit on Inferno mode in uh, eight. Mm -hmm. So that, I found that, I always found that kind of funny. Yeah. So there's a you know they don't let you just chug like an infinite amount of potions like you can in later games. All right, so now we're going to fight the actual final boss, who is, of course, God. It's three phases. Uh, you have to use all seven of your characters. They get split up uh, three, three, and one. First one's Dogi Elf Bashera. Second one is Gaius, Aisha, Cruxy, and last is Chisattle. So first, of course, we're going to be using Dogi because he can do this. Nope. Never mind, he can't do that. This is the reason they didn't make Dogi playable in later games. It's not because they wanted to focus on implementing other characters. It's entirely because Dogi is, is too good for this world. So importantly, I want to like keep this guard buff going into the break so that I can do more damage with this extra skill here. I did, got got the hit, got the big hit. So this, this, this fight is cycle-based. You can see the main body is invincible until I destroy those heads. Thankfully, all four of the heads share an HP bar. So that makes things a lot easier. Yeah, so getting the flash guards here to rebuild his extra skill meter. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna like mash attack a little bit to do just a little bit more damage. And then when the that timer reaches about one second, I'm gonna hit him with a grand slam. No, please, get, get him. No. All right, that's fine. I'll, 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 uh, I'll hit the next cycle really quickly. There you go. All right. Yeah, ideally, you get two cycles here, so. Yeah. Just for some reason, I didn't have my full extra when I wanted it. Oops, my bad. <laughs> okay, so as I've, I've mentioned before that Aisha and Cruxy, who are actually like good characters who can use good abilities, are very under level for this part. So I'm, I'm forced to use Gaius here because he was the only one who was with me when I, was, uh, when I entered the dungeon. Yeah, and this and is why he picked up a weapon in the final dungeon for Gaius specifically. And like like I said, Gaius is just a terrible character. So this is actually this this second phase actually takes kind of a while. I'm not slandering him as best boy or whatever. I'm just I'm just I'm just stating facts. His, his combat leaves a lot to be desired. Ignore the peanut gallery behind us. <laughs> Okay, so the, the kind of the strap behind this is like, I want to get his stun bar up, because he, he takes way more damage when he's stunned. He takes negligible damage when he's not stunned. I want to get his stun bar up really close to being full. And then when I'm about to stun, I want to, um, I want to uh, guard into the uh, into the extra, because what happens is like, the, the three fairies from E6 kind of come out as like, a, as like a familiar sort of ability for his uh, extra skill, and all of them will be crit. So I really would like to get that, um, 
and it'll help me get a three cycle on on this phase. You're done. Classic. I think that enemy got the point moment. All right, do it again. All right, 26 is okay for the second phase. I just want to want to get more as much extra as I can here. Yeah, so him guarding that isn't just to build meter, it's to survive. Uh, I got that too. I mean, I do have a zillion potions, mm -hmm. but menuing is slow. Yeah. Also, getting hit stunned is slow. Oh, wait, hang on. I want to actually let it lose here. Wait, do I want you want? Do I do want? Do I? No, I don't want to hit that. Uh, that's fine. I'll just mash guard some more. Oh, wait, hang on. I messed up. It's fine. Just do an extra cycle. Kind of slow. It's fine. It is worth noting that AI-controlled characters in this game cannot die. They can only go down to 1 HP. So worst case scenario, if he loses somebody, he can just quickly... That, that's why he's able to revive them, is AI characters do not die in this game, thankfully. So you always have that, like, backup if you need it. Okay, he, he's gone. You're actually done. Oh, wait, no, no, one more hit. There we go. Okay, 32 HP. Okay, last phase is just Adol, and it's kind of just a victory lap. But you just, you, he has one, I have my one move, and I just spam it a lot. Oh, I still have this move, too. That's right. I have it saved from earlier. Okay, uh, worth noting, um, after I beat the boss, time is actually in about four minutes, because uh, the, um, the, the quote-unquote credits, which are skippable, are part of time. But there's also a cutscene that I can't skip or fast-forward. That just hit through, but that'll be where, where the shoutouts come will come in. So, yeah, this game basically uses JRTA timing. One of the few East games that still does, um, and I believe part of it is just kind of, it's kind of a, it, it's kind of a hangover from when you know this game was first getting run, and then part of it is also just um, some of the weird weirdness with the version differences. They just kind of agreed on that, that would be where we uh, where we stop time. Yeah, so in the PSP version, the unskippable cutscene at the end was actually skippable, so it made sense to end timing after credits because you could just skip everything. But now there's a three-minute cutscene right at the end when it was ported to PC, and, you know, we couldn't really uh, anticipate that happening. So timing has just stayed the same, but it's fine. It's like, get up, go to the bathroom. Now we're, fight now that we're up against the real final boss, Garden Master Norg. Steam goes hard. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, embarrassingly, I think it was my most played song on Spotify last year. Nothing embarrassing about having your most played song be Falcon JDK. <laughs> Guess not. I didn't expect it when I saw it, though. Everyone's always embarrassed by the Spotify rap. It doesn't really even matter, really matter how cool it is. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, no, I thought that was going to hit me. That's fine. Too bad we didn't get... To, oh, maybe we will after this break cycle, but if we, if we see the giant laser, it'll be pretty funny. No, he didn't do it. All right. Because when the giant laser comes out, you're just in a, a huge active hitbox, and you can just go on the guard button. It's a fan favorite. There he goes. Level up right at the end. This game doesn't have New Game Plus either, so it's pointless. Go <laughs> sick. Uh, so what happens at the end? Um, uh, we beat the... 
the root of all existence, I guess. I think that's what his name was. And um, for some reason, this uh, saves the world. You think beating the root of all existence would destroy all existence, right? But this is kind of a thing with these games, is like the stakes just kind of escalate randomly to like <laughs> tremendous proportions. Goodbye, Tia. Goodbye. I'm sorry I couldn't show you Xanarkand. All right, so that was E7, 80% turbo. Uh, I do have to remember, one, one last thing I have to remember to do is mash start at the end to get through the credits. But uh, this is um, shout outs to, uh, shout outs to the East speed running community. There's a lot of games, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, shout outs to Washi, who made, uh, who, ha who was the original record holder when I was first learning this. And uh, I basically learned everything from that VOD because there's not guides for this. Mm -hmm. Very loud music. Shout outs to uh, Utika for, to, for pushing this a little bit further than that and found some new strats and then found that big skip at the start that shaved off 10 minutes right, right, off, right off the bat. Um, again, shout outs to Shano who's running all bosses. He he's only runs all bosses pretty much, but he's running all bosses at uh, RT in Japan, so I want to give a shout out to him as well. Uh, shout outs to JPHP and Jado, the only other two non-Japanese runners of this. It was just kind of just me for a while. Yeah, he runs like... Or is it he or Pew? JPHP. Yeah. Um, yeah. He runs like every East game. In fact, he's done a like entire series relay. Yeah. Like from he has to Origin, do it again in Origin September. to 9. So, <laughs> yeah, that's at about like 14 hours. So, yeah. back in the day, in um, 2016, we did a whole series relay from uh, from Origin all the way up to 7 at the time. And that was like. 15, no, that was like 18 hours. And that was like one person for each game, just back to back. So the fact that you can beat all of these games, including eight and nine in under four, in under like 14 hours, like as an individual is kind of incredible to me. Yeah. Uh, we do have to give a shout outs to, I mean, we've shout out, shouted out Jado already. Um, shout outs is what, yeah. Shout outs to Delm, who is probably the like biggest just, um, Biggest person to really push this game amongst like Western runners for the longest time. Yeah. Submitted we, it, I think. Then we ruined it for yeah. him, sadly. And then submitted it to Limit Break like 2016, all those years ago. So. Because Dylan was before we found all the skips, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Personal, personal shout out for me. Uh, shout outs to Inami Katsumi, who does the art, who did the art for the uh, PSP era games. Uh, probably more famous for games like Star Ocean. Uh, was it First Departure, the remake of that one? And then Star Ocean 4, um, Last Hope. Uh, as well as uh, the uh, art for the light novels for uh, the series Bakano, one of the more famous anime. So you recognize his style pretty quickly. Um, I don't know. I, I, I have, like, this strange nostalgia for, like, the PSP era of these games, despite the fact that I only played them a few years ago. Yeah, I only started playing these games two years ago. Like, all of them. All right, mass start, mass start. No credits, no credits. Okay, uh, time is when Finn fades all the way in, by the way. So... Time. Alrighty. All right. Uh, I won't keep anyone waiting any longer. Uh, you want to see Final Fantasy 13 coming up? Uh, shout out, shout out to Zero. He's gonna come up right after me. So uh, we'll get we'll get uh, we'll get going with that real quick. Thank you again for having me here, and thanks for everybody watching. And, and I hope you have a great Monday. <laughs>
that does it for me. Thank you so much for joining me at RPG Limit Break 2023. I'm going to be handing it off to Hebinx and a quick commercial right here, but don't go anywhere. We're just one somersault away. Hello everybody, welcome back to RPG Limit Break 2023. My name is Hebbinks and I want everybody to give a quick shout out and pipe or whatever you can to our previous host CC for doing an amazing job during that E7 run. Up next we have Final Fantasy 13, couple ongoing bid wars right now or incentives that we can meet. Right now English versus Japanese is inching closer and closer together, English is in the lead by I would say about $23. So if you want Japanese voices for that run, get your donations in now before we go ahead and start the run. And we have a $25 donation from Night Flyer. No comment, but I wanna remind everybody that whether or not you leave a comment doesn't matter. Every dollar counts towards this amazing cause.
want to remind everybody that we're here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization whose workforce is focused around three pillars, education and support, awareness, and advocacy. What does that mean? Education and support. Via their 48 state offices and nearly 700 affiliates, NAMI offers a host of signature programs, presentations, and support groups that are available free of charge. This includes a national helpline that can provide information, resources, and compassionate understanding trained volunteers to support anyone who calls in. So again, a few things set up here, chat. Wanted to go ahead and plug a few more of our incentives that we have coming up. Uh, for Dragon Ball Z, Legend of the Super Saiyan, we have a character bid war for sacrificing themselves. Uh, Yamcha is still in the lead with $20. Chaozu is close behind at $15. Tian Shinhan only has $4, and Gohan and Krillin have $0. So if you want to snipe those bids, now's your ch uh, chance, chat. You only have until the end of Final Fantasy 13 to get those bids in. Following that, we also have a bid war for Final, uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest Randomizer to choose your character sprite between Airship, Paladin Cecil, Mog, NES Link, or Rydia, and you have the choice to name Benjamin. We are taking the top two names for those donation bids, and right now Mighty B is in a mighty lead with $1,710, Shrugs at 100, and Mirane at 55. And just a couple donations here while we're finalizing our setup here. We have $25 from Anonymous with no comment, but I do want to thank Anonymous, the deep, deep pockets that they have. Every event, Anonymous shows up without fail, bringing the uh, money bags. We have $12 from Zushi Wuxian says, Hi, thank you for the broadcast. Nami Heart. <laughs> 